Hi, Dr. Charles Martin here with Calculation Consulting. Today, I'd like to tell you about a very important tool you need to have in your toolbox to be a great data scientist. And that tool is the back of the envelope calculation. What do I mean by back of the envelope calculation? Well, in theoretical physics programs, like the program I studied in, University of Chicago, or say the graduate program at Stanford, they actually have a class on how to do back of the envelope calculations. By this I mean a very fast, simple calculation that can get you to 70, 80, 90 percent of the way to solving a problem just on the back of an envelope. Where does the term actually come from? Well, when, when I say back of the envelope, I don't mean a little envelope like this. I actually mean a manila envelope. These are the kind of envelopes I, that were used at the Enrico Fermi Institute back in the day, before Twitter and before email, in order to send messages. You know, so if you were a faculty at the university and somebody needed to send you a document, they'd put it in an envelope like this and send it to you. And I, the way it was explained to me when I was at the University of Chicago, that Enrico Fermi, when he was there, had hundreds of these envelopes stacked in his, in his office. And he was just known to be an absolute genius at being able to solve quick and dirty calculations on the back of one of these envelopes. In fact, and for those of you who don't know who Enrico Fermi, Enrico Fermi is, Enrico Fermi developed the first self-sustaining chain nuclear reaction. In other words, he developed the bomb. And one of the more famous calculations he was said to have done and, is that when he was working in the Manhattan Project, that he needed to compute the yield of the bomb. So he took a piece of paper and he ripped it up into small pieces until he had a large number of small pieces. And then he took them and he spread them onto the ground. He let them fall onto the ground, you know, with what the current wind conditions were. He then measured the distribution of how they fell on the ground. And with a little bit of calculation, he was able to compute how large the explosion would be. That's pretty amazing. This guy was absolutely incredible. And, you know, when you go to a place like the University of Chicago and you hear stories like this, you meet some of the faculty there, you understand where the bar is and what's expected out of you. So when I work with clients and someone comes to me and they have a problem they'd like me to solve, I think to myself, how can I get them a solution as fast as possible? You know, really, I would like to be able to be generating revenue for a client within 24 hours. And we've had clients like this, where we've put products into production as a website and you know, as a Flask API, and within 24 hours, you see an uptick in revenue. How do you do this? Well, you need to be able to do a quick and dirty calculation. You need to be able to set up your machine learning calculation and run an end-to-end -end and figure out, do you have the problem set up correctly? Now, you're, you're not trying to win a Kaggle contest here. We're not trying to go through 125 iterations of what features to use, what algorithm is best, and so on and so on. In order to be able to do back-of-the-envelope calculations, you have to have great technical proficiency in some very basic tools. You've got to, you have to, you have to work on the command line. You have to know Bash. You have to know SQL. You have to know how to manipulate JSON and XML. You've got to be able to just crack out, crank out from a data set to a feature set as quickly as possible. You also may have some machine learning tools you use on the command line. In the old days before Python was really popular and you had Python notebooks, I would use Liblinear. And there are a lot of great, powerful command line tools. SVMs, Random Forest, XGBoost, factorization machines, available on the command line for you to do very fast calculations. You can also do a back of the envelope calculation by having a Python notebook. So instead of having one of these, you know, notebooks sitting around, or the, excuse me, one of these envelopes, you want to be able to spool up a notebook quickly, get the data into the notebook, you know, do a SQL query or do a pandas read, and you've got to be able to process it. You've got to know pandas, and you, you've got to know scikit-learn. You have to have some basic tools that you have written in Keras, some simple neural networks that you know how to build or that you can pre-use. You've got to have these tools set up, you've got to get your data, and you've got to run through the calculations. And your goal as a scientist is to see, is the problem framed correctly? Does the problem make sense? Are you going to be able to get the data? Are you, do you have the right features? Are there problems in the data? Is there information leakage? Does it make sense at all? And can you get to a quick and dirty calculation? 
Many years ago, I worked at Demand Media, which was the first billion dollar IPO since Google. I was a consultant for them, and they had asked me to solve a really important problem. How do you predict how much traffic would come to a website just based on the title of the web page before you wrote the page? Now, this was you know back in 2010 or so, and it was you know we were actually before Google Panda. In fact, we were in fact the cause of Google Panda. For all of you who do SEO, I'm uh, I'm sorry. You know, it, it got but back in those days, you could predict SEO. And so once I had the data, and they'd given it to me, I remember I got on the airplane, opened up my laptop, and just started hacking away. Hack, I you know I flew back. I went to LA, flew back from LA to San Francisco. The hour or so I was on the airport. You know, sitting around the airport, on the airplane, I came home, went right to my local cafe, worked till midnight to the cafe closed, had an answer. And I didn't have the exact answer we put into production. What I had was a preliminary prototype, a simple result which I knew, okay, this problem makes sense. Okay, I know how to solve this problem. Okay, now I know what we can do to get this thing working at scale and to begin predicting traffic. And, you know, it worked like a charm. I and mean, we, we had like a 500% increase in revenue. It was phenomenal. And I always take this approach when I'm dealing with my clients, if I can. I try to tell them, give me your data, let's collect it, and let's try to knock down a simple solution and make sure we understand what we're trying to do and try to flush out the problems as early as possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful to you. Again, to summarize, you need, as a data scientist, to be able to frame a problem. And to do that, we want to try to be like the great physicists of old and do quick, fast, back-of-the-envelope calculations on the command line or in your IPython notebook. I hope this has been helpful, and I thank you for coming to watch my channel.